All that she could do, she has now done. A constant presence in all of our lives has gone. And Britain becomes a different place without her. to read you a few lines from Pilgrim's Progress. Because I'm sure we can say, with Mr. Valiant for truth, these words. Though with great difficulty I am got hither, yet now I do not repent me of all the trouble I have been at to arrive where I am. My sword I give to him that shall succeed me in my pilgrimage and my courage and skill to him that can get it. My marks and scars I carry with me to be a witness for me that I have fought his battles who now will be my rewarder. Good evening. Tonight, in a special programme, we're marking the passing of the crown, the transition of power from the reign of Queen Elizabeth II to that of King Charles III. What kind of monarch will he be? How will he lead our nation through this period of enormous change? I'll be talking to people who know him well to get their personal insights into the man who is our new king. At six o'clock this evening, Charles III addressed the nation, addressed all of us, for the first time as our king. He paid a very personal tribute to his mother and pledged to echo her life of duty and service with his own. It was a speech I'm told he worked on until the last minute in his determination to get it exactly right. And as he talked to us from the desk in the blue drawing room at Buckingham Palace, where his mother often gave her Christmas message, he had carefully placed objects full of meaning around him such as the flowers, sweet peas with rosemary for remembrance, and in a vase which the former queen always used in her audience room, which has three little corgis on the bottom. Let's hear some of the king's words. <laughs> 